clinical features of primary ciliary dyskinesia. The symptoms appear in the neonatal period and infancy itself, although not all patients will be diagnosed early. The clinical features broadly can be categorized into three parts. You have the respiratory involvement. Second is your involvement of the left, right axis problems which will include your uh, various types of uh, situs inverses, heterotaxy, dextrocardia, etc. And the third variety will be the miscellaneous problems including infertility. So, let us discuss all the three spectrums one by one. The first are the respiratory manifestations. The respiratory manifestations, as I said, they will begin in the neonatal period. A particularly common manifestation in term newborns will be neonatal respiratory distress, NRD. You will find that it will resemble patients of uh, TTN. You know that term newborns can develop transient tachypnea of newborn. So, it will be similar. So, there will be tachypnea in the patient. There will be retractions, use of accessory muscles of respiration and there will be some response to oxygen. But you know that TTN, when you do a chest x-ray, you find that there is fluid in the interloper fissure or some haziness of the lung fields is seen. In these patients, you will find that the chest x-ray will show the presence of upper lobe or middle lobe, either unilateral or bilateral, atelectasis will be there. And that type of respiratory distress, which is very slowly resolving and requires some degree of uh, some degree of oxygen or CPAP support, is one of the common manifestations in these children. So neonatal respiratory distress in term neonates will be present. In fact, uh, some of the texts say that any newborn having respiratory distress with atelectasis in a term baby and presence of situs inverses should be the soft clues that maybe we are dealing with the cartagena syndrome like condition. Then we have chronic productive cough beginning from infancy. So right from first year of life, you will have chronic uh, productive. Chronic, when we say chronic, it will be like the child is always coughing and there will always be production. See, the child may not be able to produce sputum, but parents will say that there is always, you know, noisy breathing happening in the child. When you try to do auscultation, you will find that there are conducted sounds bilaterally present which are changing after st steam inhalation or ch after changing position. So, soft clues that it is a productive cuff will be there beginning from infancy. So, chronic cuff with sputum production will be a feature. Then, bronchiectasis can develop and chronic actually recurrent infections, recurrent bacterial infections, recurrent viral infections due to this chronic cuff will lead to uh, a cycle where eventually damage and dilatation of the bronchus will happen leading to bronchiectasis. You need to remember that whenever you look at the uh, common bacteria which are responsible for producing exacerbations or worsening, it is Haemophilus influenza which is common, particularly the non-typeable forms. Then you have Staph aureus, which is commonly a reason for colonization also and exacerbation also. You have Streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus and you have Pseudomonas aeruginosa. These are the four top pathogens commonly found in Cartagena syndrome, airway, mucus, bronchial villar lavage secretions. Then other than bronchiectasis, you will find that these children have uh, difficult to manage repeated chronic otitis media and persistent middle ear effusions. There will be chronic and non-seasonal rhinosinusitis. So, nasal stuffiness, nasal discharge and sinusitis will be there along with nasal polyps. There is a table mentioning the features of Cartagena which is there in Nelson. The table does not talk about nasal polyp but the text talks about nasal polyp and review articles also talk about it. Why am I stressing upon it? Which of the following is not seen in Cartagena syndrome is an old super speciality MCQ. Nasal polyp was in the option and that was not the answer. Nasal polyps are indeed seen. They are a common feature in Cartagena syndrome. Many students were got it wrong at that time thinking that Nelson table does not talk about it. Nelson table talks about it, uh, doesn't talk about it, but the text does talk about it, right? Atypical refractory asthma can sometimes be seen, recurrent pneumonias can be seen, and digital clubbing, although digital clubbing usually appears in the adolescent period, not in the early childhood.
then you will have left right laterality defects now left right laterality defects why do they appear it is found that although the ciliary dysfunction happening in these patients involves the motile cilia many of these children i would say up to 25% of these children up to 50% they also have problems in the nodal cilia not all but some of them and because there are problems in the nodal cilia the ab ability of the body the ability of the cell lineages to move from right to left and left to right particularly the thoraco abdominal organ cell lineages will be affected and so you will have problems like situs inversus totalis to develop in some of these individuals other patients you will find that there is heterotaxy with or without complex congenital heart diseases developing in these patients so these are the two important manifestations related to left to right laterality defects uh, but nelson clearly says that out of all situs inversus patients only 25% have primary ciliary dyskinesia not all of them have it. and third category are the miscellaneous problems which includes male infertility with immotile sperms it is found that uh, patients who have ciliary dysfunction many of them similar structure is also present in the sperms uh, flagella of the sperm and so you will find that male infertility with immotility of the sperms is also a frequent association in case of females you will find that fertility is reduced because cilia in the fallopian tube are dysfunctional or absent however it is not complete infertility it is subfertility the word subfertility is used in case of females so female subfertility can be seen it happens due to decreased motility in the fallopian tube due to cilia not being there then ectopic pregnancy can develop and the neonatal hydrocephalus has also been described the neonatal hydrocephalus is a relatively rare condition but if it is present along with situs inversus uh, again it's a clue that the patient probably is having a young child is probably having cartagena syndrome